Good morning, everyone. Well, I don't know what time you're watching at, but I'm filming in the morning. So good morning from Mine Expo in Vegas. I'm your host, Jared Downey. We're filming mining now, and we've got Terry Galvin, VP of Recycling Services at Cal Tire. Sir, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks a lot for uh, having us, Jared. Um, I don't know who designed your booth. I don't know who put it together, but it is, uh, there's, I, I think you're in the top three. There's three booths here that I thought, I mean, putting aside, you know, I'm, I'm putting aside the, the Cal tires and <laughs> fat suits. That's, that's a whole other thing. It's a whole other world. Um, but man, it's a great setup. You got a good location. You can see it from everywhere. Yeah, it's pretty pretty special. We've had lots of lots of traffic here through the show. Lots of um, you know good, interesting conversations. It's been fantastic, and like you say, I think a lot of the uh, the secret is just making it the place that people want to come and spend time and have a well, discussion. You with can us. see it. I walked in from way on that end, and you, I could see it from way back there. And like you said, there's only a couple booths that have gotten that uh, yeah. that perfect placement. So good on whoever designed it for you. Yeah, we can we can thank Tracy for that. But, um, oh, well, thank you, Tracy. <laughs> um, so okay, what are we covering today? Let's most people know Cal Tire. Although I will say, some people know Cal Tire, um, obviously for the shops that are all over you know, the, the place. Yep. Um, but so let's talk just on the mining side. Can you just give us a like quick snapshot of the Cal Tire Mining Group, that side of it? Yeah. So, so we're a group services consisting of um, you know hands-on tire sales, repairs, retreading. Uh, we've got a lot of technology that we utilize to to help mine operators, you know, make their fleets run more efficiently. Um, and a long, long history in the, the mining side. Yeah, Cal Tire started about 70 years ago, hard to believe, That's in crazy. a little town in uh, in uh, central British Columbia called Vernon, Vernon BC. And yeah. uh, the roots are there and still the company headquarters are there today. So, from Which is, which is by the way, is an awesome thing that it's still, like yeah. when I talk to the office and I, it's still Vernon. It's it, 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 it really is. It really is. And, and as a you know Canadian, a little bit of, uh, it's nice to be proud of, yeah. you know, having yeah. a, a company like Cal Tire that you can... Yeah. You know, start a career and and you know work almost anywhere, any segment across the world, whether it's retail or or passenger car or or commercial or or mining like that. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about our heavy industry world tour, brought to you by Savina Equipment. Find, market, and sell surplus and used equipment. And Fogmaker protect lives and vehicles with Fogmaker fire suppression systems because safety can never be a compromise. We are heading to events across North America and Australia and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of Crownsman's heavy industry world tour. Austin Powder uses Paradigm to meet customer requirements and enhance blast efficiency and production. Paradigm offers several advanced features including fragmentation modeling, PPV and PVS reduction, charging and timing analysis, fly rock prediction, energy distribution, 3D blast modeling, muck pile footprint prediction, and overpressure prediction. With these innovative tools and state-of-the-art software, Austin Powder provides comprehensive blast analysis and optimization. Explore more about Austin Powder and cutting-edge products at austinpowder.com. CIM is Canada's leading technical institute dedicated to the sustainability of our industry. Members enjoy professional growth opportunities through CIM libraries, publications, webinars, societies, and the job board. Experience the CIM community firsthand at the Conference of Metallurgists, August 19th to 22nd, ICARD, September 16th to 20th, and the CIM Health and Safety Conference, October 6th to 8th. Visit cim.org for more information and join CIM today. Who is Savina Equipment? Savina Equipment Limited is a buyer and seller of new used and refurbished industrial equipment with a focus on mining and construction. They find, market, and sell surplus and used equipment. Does the equipment need work? They can refurbish. Is there something you can't find? They source those hard-to-find items. Selling equipment? They buy, consign, and broker equipment and asset packages. Need equipment moved? Savina Equipment manages logistics for worldwide delivery. Surface and underground ore processing, concentrating and refining plants and equipment, power generation and electrical, pump, material handling, alluvial plaster, gold mining, recycling, and much more. If you need to buy, sell, find, refurbish, or move equipment, you need Savannah Equipment. Savannah Equipment, more equipment every day. Visit them at SavannahEquipment.com. Um, my memories of Vernon are sitting in the penalty box. I'm talking there mostly, but you know. <laughs> our obligatory canadian right yeah, yeah no i really lived up to those stereotypes um okay so um what are we covering today uh very we've, we've touched on it a couple years ago now though so let's bring it back what is your focus on today you've got a whole wall behind you sort of displaying it yeah so what we're going to talk about today is uh cal tires unique uh mining tire recycling um program that we call our thermal conversion uh, technology 
Uh, it really started by uh, miners needing an answer to mining tires. So they had you know massive challenges with changing reg- regulation and legislation that dictates doing the right thing with tires. Unfortunately, mining tires are massive. They're very hard. This, so when you say regulation, that was specifically in Chile, right? Specifically yeah. in yeah. Chile, and and generally, um, you know, governance on ESG as a whole, miners are being asked to do more. Um, but there wasn't really a good solution for them to do the right thing in you know in the most uh, environmentally friendly way. So, uh, Caltire started on this journey to come up with a technology that offered miners the opportunity to do that. And and the technology we settled on is called thermal conversion. Uh, it's quite simple. It uh, you know heat and um, um, you know heat in the absence uh, heat and friction in the absence of oxygen. You know we can take these massive tires and break them down into their their core components. So. Just, just to ask the obvious question, it's this is when the it's their past, uh, yep. life life. Yeah. So you know, uh, again, you know, haul trucks and haulage, and and you know, that's a major uh, major point of focus for mines to get you know the most out of out of their assets. So you know, Caltire, you know, helps the customers to um, you know through fleet management and and tire lifetime services and our tire site technologies get the the longest life and the most value for the customer of the tires, but eventually. It comes to an end. They can't be repaired anymore. So I, I want. I, it's amazing. I've never asked this question before. Where's the? Where, there, there's the retread services mm-hmm. um, that that Cal Tire is very well known for. And then, what? At what point does that tire go past the retread and into? The now it's time to recycle it. Yeah, so you know a tire will you know pick up holes or get injuries as we call them you know throughout its life and it eventually comes to a point where there is you know too much damage and not enough material left um, you know to be able to to repair it any longer and then it goes into you know typically a stockpile um, you know for disposal and and most of the time it just sits in that stockpile for a, for a long time. Um, what we do is from that point, you would take that tire from the stockpile and it would go into a thermal conversion plant. And it gives you the opportunity to take all of the commodities that exist inside that tire and mm-hmm. turn them back into uh, feedstock for you know, potential other industrial uses. Is it melting it down to essentially, uh, w- what kind of form is it ending up in? Yeah, so the the it doesn't actually melt it. So it, it, okay. it's, it's an indirect heat that we utilize um, and it precipitates a thermal conversion reaction. The reaction gives us an energy source that we can run the plant process on. Um, oh, okay. As part of that process, we get a pyrolysis oil. That oil is, you know, suitable for many different applications across the industry, right from alternative fuel to chemical feedstocks, mm. um, things like, uh, you know, even emulsion and and some interest in in replacement of reagents in mines. If so you're this is at, not being going back into the tire world. This product is going out for other uses. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Some some of the streams. So that's the pyrolysis oil. If we look at the steel, it's a very uh, clean, high grade steel. The steel through the thermal conversion uh, process comes out as a um, completely clean with no rubber. So when we look at uh, other green uses, it, it's very attractive to um, waste companies and, and other interest because it's it's easy to use. And then the final product we get is a carbon ash. Um, that carbon ash is uh, derived from the carbon black uh, within that the tire was made up in the first place. Uh, so we take that out and and then that's left in a in a condition for us to reprocess. It's not ready for the full circular economy. So the carbon ash, it comes out, it, it, it's a uh, feedstock for a process that we've been working on uh, for some time, uh, engineering a way to take that carbon black, treat it again. It was always the plan in Chile for us to put in an upgrading facility. We're working on what right now that um, will be ready, you know, towards the end of this year. And what it actually does is it takes that carbon feedstock as the next piece of the puzzle. Um, we have a proprietary process that focuses the energy on the carbon and it transforms it again. So what it does is it cleans the it cleans the carbon up because there's still some residue from the primary pyrolysis and uh, thermal conversion process. Um, it increases and improves the surface area of that product, which is a very important characteristic for downstream rubbers. And the other thing it does is it reduces the ash content. So what we are able to do now is uh, formulate uh, an output that is, you know, exactly in line with what the mm. industry specifications for um, this carbon product to come back into that circularity. So we truly are seeing that highest and best use in in, in potential from that product. So is this the, the this is the refining process yeah. for the carbon ash that yep. we're talking about? What is the capacity of this facility? So is this facility part of the Chilean one? 
or yeah, is this so, a different location? So this facility is uh, is part of the Chilean facility. Okay. Um, and, and our footprint, we always knew uh, when we started on the journey, there would be something that we would need to do with the carbon. So this is the last phase of the uh, of the the actual total thermal conversion process. Oh, okay, um, okay. So, so we we add this upgrading onto the end of the plant, and that gives us the capacity to transform this material into uh, those materials that are suitable for for application in rubbers. What is the capacity for something like this? Like, could it handle all the mines in Chile? Or could it handle? Yes. Yeah, so, so the of? plant is uh, is seven thousand five hundred tons uh, per year. The total plant, um, and we can handle you know all of that capacity. Uh, the property in Chile, you know, we're able, because of the modular design uh, that we've engineered, we can expand to additional lines as, as demand grows okay. and need grows. So uh, today, you know, we're at 7,500. You know, if there's, if there's demand in the market and miners interest, you know, we can increase that capacity. As heavy machinery specialists for mining, SMS Equipment knows performance, like the performance they achieve together in a partnership dedicated to the success of their mining customers. At SMS Equipment, they're more than machines from trusted brands. They're the people beside you today and every day bringing industry-leading technology and expertise to your mining operation. Because the right partnership makes everything possible. SMS Equipment, partners in your possibilities. Discover what's possible at smsequipment.com. Techway designs, manufactures, and services high-quality industrial scales and feeders. For over 50 years, processors of everything from French fries to frac sand have counted on Techway to provide the most durable, accurate, and reliable in-motion feeding, weighing, and metering equipment for their dried material handling needs. They specialize in providing tailored solutions that endure the test of time and material. Techway's quality line of products are proudly made in the USA. Learn more at techway.com. In the toughest environments, you need the hardest, toughest steel. With a full range of grades designed to meet the extreme demands of hard-wearing applications, from mining to construction and heavy transport, Hardox Wear Plate has it covered. Trust Hardox Wear Steel to extend your equipment service life, boost efficiency, and power up productivity. Their wear experts partner with industry leaders to deliver solutions that stand up to any test. Ready to tackle your toughest wear challenges? Bring it on. Visit hardox.com to learn more. What's been the feedback from operators for this? The operators are really excited about it because, you know, in Notion, you know, everybody knows that they need to do the right thing, but in reality, there hasn't been a lot of solutions, you know, that were available to them for it. So after a couple of years in Chile, you know, they're very excited about seeing the results. You know, there's one thing that we do with the, um, with our process uh, along the lines of the ISCC certification is, is all of the product that we take in, you know, sees a serial number, sees a mass when it comes in. So we know exactly uh, through meticulous record keeping from one end to the other that that tire has come from a place and it's turned into something else and it's gone uh, to a specific location. So most um, most operations and most operators really like that because they feel like they're getting, um, you know, they're getting what the promise, you know, of, of a recoverable uh, material in, in circular economy is. Um, they love the they love the idea of being able to bring product to product. So you know when you you talk to the mines, they're very excited about the idea of saying there's a potential to have tires that came from my mine, possibly come back in some fashion to the mine as a different product. As a different product, and additionally, they're excited about the fact that with the carbon transformation process that we utilize, you can do that time and time again. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can you know you can take a tire. Um, and and you will be able to use it and recycle it and use it and recycle it with a, with a portion of that you know potentially coming back into to tires. So it really is a a way to to close that loop. Do you think I, I've asked Dave about this, but do you think um, like Chile it was it was expedited at at, at very least expedited mm -hmm. um, because of government regulations? Mm -hmm. Is that what it takes, or are there case studies where this could be? You know, Dave's mentioned wanting it, you know, obviously in the Canadian market, mm -hmm. the U.S. market. Does it take regulation to make it happen? I don't think so. Look, I think we've seen a lot of um, a lot of interest from different mines and miners in different jurisdictions that have an appetite, um, you know, to just to do the right thing. So, yeah. you know, we, you know, legislation is, is always, you know, probably part of that uh, patchwork, you know, over time. And I think that, you know, comes more as a necessity of... Um, you know, creating an, an ecosystem whereby uh, recycling technologies as a whole mm. are broadly available for customers. But, you know, for example, in our case, you know, we're, we're a piece of that of that puzzle and a piece of that solution. You know, we'll never be the whole solution, but we'll, we'll be a piece right. of it. And in that, um, you know, we've got a lot of interest in, and I don't think the legislation is the precursor. No, for, okay, well, that, uh, that's good to hear. Um, what, 
if you just just the, the history, what did it take like timeline to get this fully? Well, it's still in development actually. Yeah. The next phase of it, yeah. but um, oh wait, is that in development or has it been developed? So the development and the refining process has been in conjunction with um, you know, our research you know wings with you know in conjunction with universities, and that's been ongoing for a number of years now. So to prove that we could actually, in reality, transform that carbon ash into something yeah. of, of a higher uh, value that was more suitable for that higher, highest and best use. So w what the uh, construction of the uh, recycling or the refinery um, is marking the end of that, that process that has been ongoing for some while. I think the overall plant and design is probably six or seven years, yeah. you know, in the making and, you know, and then the, the hard, hard construction process through COVID is. Right. Yeah. Uh, you, oh, right. You had it right in there. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, so we've been running, you know, commercially for two and a half years now and, uh, and the overall operation is going well. So, well, uh, yeah, thank you very much for doing the interview. I hope, I hope more of these come online. I, I, I know, I know you, Cal Tire is, is interested in doing more. So I hope, I hope sort of the mining industry in the U S Canadian side sort of, gets behind and there's that demand there to, to, to get it going. Yeah, for sure. And I, it's, look, it's a matter of time. I think, yeah. the, I think the fact that, uh, you know, we have the plant in Chile is a really good example yeah. of, of that it can be done and, you know, people appreciate, you know, miners, you know, and not always the first movers. So to see something in reality is, yeah. Uh, yeah. is, is the proof that they need. Yeah. And, the perfect first to be second yeah. the setup. So yeah, for sure. Thank you very much, sir. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Jared. Let's do it again. Um, okay. And thank you everybody for watching. That's another episode of mine. Now there is, we've done multiple episodes over the years from all different elements of Cal Tire. There's some very interesting stuff on there. There will be a link to the playlist for the Cal Tire episodes if you want to see more. So go check that out in the description of the video. If you're watching on YouTube, of course, follow, uh, Cal Tire. I think there's a Cal Tire LinkedIn page and a Cal Tire mining group LinkedIn page as well. So you can follow both those. Those will, of course be linked and tagged. Um, thank you. Uh, you have LinkedIn, right? Yep, yeah, I do. Yeah. So you can connect directly with the guest. Um, again, link in the description, follow us, subscribe. Thank you for all your support. Thank you to Cal Tire for having us, uh, in their booth at mine expo. We'll see you on the next episode.